Hello guys and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we will be going to learn about the DBF. Now the first question came to your mind is what exactly the DBF is and what is the use of it? Yes, I will cover all your question in this video. We will create one demo application in which we will we will see how to configure DBF and how to use it. We will go through uh, each and every step and uh, in that demo i will also try to cover some real time test cases now before i go ahead let me introduce myself i am krishna jrana and i am a lead software engineer in my organization now what is dbf dbf is an open source dotnet library which will help us to deploy our database related changes on on production or on staging server now there are many organization out there who still publish their database related changes uh, manually on staging or on production server. Now imagine that if you have more than one production server instance, then deploying this SQL script on each and every instance become very tedious. Now of course there are many ways to automate this process, but DBF is one of the good alternative. Now how to configure the DBF? So it is very easy to configure DBF. This library provides us some series of extension method to configure uh, to configure in our uh, in our application. Now you can also say that this is nothing but a set of instruction which we need to tell to this library that hey I want to publish this this database script on this particular database and on this server. So we will we will go through we will go through this all this method in the in the demo part. Now, as I said earlier that this library is an open source, so it's available on GitHub. You can go through this link. You can fork this library and you can contribute something your own. Now, let's jump into the demo part. All right, guys, so uh, here I have already created one console application. Uh, you can create this console application by going to the file menu and select new project. And in the C sharp template, here we have a console application option. Now, in in this application solution explorer, I have already created some predefined SQL script which I want to deploy on another uh, on another database. So in the script folder, here I have created some SQL script. So as you can see, this this are the very simple script. Now here, please note that the file name of all the script I have prefixed with the numeric. So it will help the DBF to execute uh, this SQL script in this particular order. All right, now I want to deploy this, uh, all this script on this database. So as you can see this, this database is empty right now. Assume that this is your staging server. Now I want to, uh, Publish all the script on the database. So for that, I have defined the connection string in this app.config file, and uh, I have specified the database name. All right. Now, first thing first, let us uh, add the reference of DB up from the NuGet. So now, let me open the NuGet and let us search for DB up. All right. Now make sure you choose the latest table version. Now click on install button. All right. So now we have uh, the we have added the reference of DB up. Now first now first let us configure the connection string on which we want to deploy our, uh, our database. So let us define the connection string. And now let us configure the DB app. So So this deploy changes dot two, you can say this deploy changes dot two is an entry point to the uh, in configuring the DBF. 
and then we will uh, the, and then it will provide some series of extension method as i said earlier to configure the dbf so now let us first specify uh, the database string on which we want to deploy our uh, database script so with this we are using this method uh, we will tell the db update i want to uh, publish my database script on on this particular uh, database so here we need to specify the connection string which we have already defined above and then we will tell and then we will tell the db update okay i want to uh, execute the script recited within this application using this method with scripts embedded in assembly and then we will specify the assembly dot get executing assembly and now i want to log so as we are using this console application so we will uh, log to console we have another option to log but we are using this method and then we will build object and now finally we will perform then now now we will tell the db update perform the operation for that we will use the perform upgrade method of this library now this result object will return some true or false flag so let us define that result dot now the successful flag will return true or false if if our script executed successfully then this successful flag will return true else it will return false so if it is not executed successfully then we will display the error in a uh, red color so for that console dot background color and then we will dis and if it is successful then we will display the message like scripts deployed successfully all right so now the our code is ready now let us run the application so here if you see that it will it 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 is so as that no new script need to be executed so when you first time configure this many developer are made this type of mistake so now how to fix this or right, let us stop the application go to the script and select all the script click on right click and then click right click and, uh, and select properties and now in this build action you need to specify it as embedded resource so this is the very important step which you which you need to specify by selecting this file name all right now let us run the application again here we go so now as you can see this we have uh, this dbf will execute all our script in the specified database now let us refresh this database and as you can see all the specified all the mentioning table are created here now one thing to note here the dbf will also create this special table for us now this table will create tracking for us let us see what uh, what is there in this table so as you as you see that uh, dbf will uh, maintain all the all the track of our, uh, of all the specified scripts all right now let us move on to the another test case okay now in this test case i want to publish some stored procedures Uh, which i have made but from this particular folder only now for that 
uh, we need to use uh, one overload option of this method this method have specified so many overload option among which we will use this filter option now what we need to specify in this in this filter option so for that let us study this uh, tracking table which is created by this dbf now if you see the uh, the file name created by this application it will it will insert the file name in one particular format so it's like application name and then and then there is a script folder and then there is a dead folder which is which is application name and then we have script and then we have a date folder so we need to use we'll be gonna use this particular string in that filter option how let's see this Then we will change this uh, folder name to this because we have uh, we have specified this folder name over here. Now let us copy uh, the file name. Let me copy this in this folder, and don't forget to mark it as embedded resource. Now let us build the application and let us run it. So yes, now this time it will execute our uh, all the stored procedures but within this folder only. Let us verify it again. So as you can see that our stored procedure I, uh, are now created in, in, in this particular folder. So this is the power of DBF. Uh, you can explore this library uh, as per your requirement. If you have any query or concern, you can ask me. You can ask me through this comment section. Uh, so that's it for now, guys. If you like this video, then don't forget to subscribe my channel. And uh, till then, stay tuned and thank you for watching this video.